Okay, we're doing a regression example. We have some data. So step number one was uh, to identify your X and your Y. Already done that. Step number two was to create a scatter plot. So insert scatter. I'm gonna highlight any one of the numbers, add trend line. Display equation, R squared. Put that up here, take that. A little smaller. Okay. So it looks like we have a good R squared, 0 0.63, 0 0.64, 1.7 as our slope, and 10 for our intercept. Okay. So going into my add ins, I'm going to go into Megastat, Correlation Regression, and then Regression Analysis. Clear everything out. So my x-axis is, or my x-values are here. My y-values y are here. And I am going to type in some predictors. I want to know what's happening on the 11th value. Okay. And I don't want any of these other ones. We'll discuss those in another video. So basically what I want to know here is X only goes out to 10 values. I want to know what's going to happen on the 11th value. Because what a regression does is it helps predict the future based off the past. And so we want to know what's going to happen on the 11th day, off the 11th unit, or whatever 11 happens to be. So I'm going to push OK. All right, we get a very complicated set of results. OK. So regression analysis, we have our R squared value, which we already know that about 64% of Y is explained by X. Our R value is about 0.8, so a very strong positive or direct relationship. Pretty good standard error here. You'll notice that our P value for our F test, that's what this whole ANOVA is about, is exactly the same as our t-test for our x value. The reason for that is that when conducting a single regression, these two are going to be the same because it's an overall fit of the model. Since we only have one x, this model is going to reflect, the overall model is based off one single beta or one single x value. So yes, they're going to be exactly the same. However, when doing a multiple regression, these two numbers are not going to be the same because the F test in this whole ANOVA table is basically saying, how good is the overall model? Whereas down here, it's just going to be a p-value based off each individual x values. So just a point of clarification and note on that. So let's take a look at our t-tests for our x and our intercept. So our h naught, remember for our intercepts and our x values, basically say our beta is going to be equal to zero. Our alternative, our beta not equal to zero, or in other words, no relationship. between x and y, and there is a relationship between your x and y. So you want to see low p-values and high t-values. So in this case, we definitely have low p-values, definitely below the 0.05, that is the standard criteria. So we reject the null, except the alternative that there is a relationship between your x and your y. You also notice that Megastat puts significant values in yellow on both cases. So that's a good little trick to do. All right, so let's write out our prediction or our equation here. So our y hat is equal to 
1.72x plus 10.13. Okay, we got those numbers from down over here. So my y hat is equal to 1.72x, that's my beta, and my intercept 10.3 is found here. Which basically means, in terms of interpretation, if all other things are held equal, if x increases by 1, y hat, or y in this case, is going to increase by 1.72. It's almost about 1 and 3 quarters increase for every 1x increase. Alright, so let's see what's going to happen to our prediction. That's where we have come here. We have our x is equal to 11, and then we have a predictive value of 29.067. Now remember, this is our y hat. This is our value based off of this entire equation. It is not going to be the actual y. And so we have confidence intervals to figure that out. All right, so we have this prediction of about 30, and we're going to be using the prediction interview interval right here as our high and our low. So basically what we're saying is we think, based off the model, that it's going to be around 29, almost 30. But we're also having this take into account that it's not going to be exactly that number, and we think that it's going to fall between 17 and 40. based off a 95% confidence interval and the data and so on and so forth. So we think it's going to fall between those two points. We think it's going to be near or around 30 based off of this equation. And so that's the purpose and the analysis of the regression analysis. So just to recap, there are squared, 64% of x is explained by y. Your R value shows a very strong relationship, particularly a very strong direct relationship. We have 10 variables. We only have, or 10 in terms of our sample size, we only have one variable. Your dependent variable is Y. Our F test looks good, which not surprising because we only have one at variable and they are the same p values. Our intercept and our x are both statistically significant. That is to say that there is a relationship between x and y. Our equation looks like 1.72x plus 10.3. And we predicted if x is equal to 11, we predict that it's going to be about 29 with a lower bound of 17.38 and an upper bound of 40.75. So going back to our original example, 1.72, 10.33, and 0.63. Everything lines up nice and neatly. Everything is good. The trick with regressions, going back to the output, is to take it one step at a time and understand what each one of those little variables mean. Might I suggest using the review and comment section? or typing it out like I have here, what each one means and how they're all related. Then I would print it off as use as a guide to understanding what the output means. That way as you go through homework and exercises, you're able to understand and get to the information that you need. Okay, thank you.